So we are going to have a look at recent US Open winner Gary Woodland Swing. Have a look at what makes it work, but most important of all, what you can take out of it to help your game. So I've long been a big admirer of Gary's swing. I first saw him hitting balls in person at the Byron Nelson Classic about 10 years ago when it was at the old location in the middle of Dallas and he swung it absolutely amazing. He still had the lag, still swung it left. Everything that I liked about his swing and think is a key character for a lot of people's swings and so much you can get out of it is in that golf swing. The link is above. Take a look at that. This is the old swing with a fairy wood. I promise you in person, the ball flight when it comes out and starts off with is lower than you could ever imagine. Let's have a look at how he makes that work and how he is able to play these famous stingers that everybody goes and has a look at shots of on social media. So we have a look at Gary here. Here he is at the um, Open Championship on the left-hand side of the screen in the shot zone. And what we can see is, as he's taking it back, first move away from me is real just classic first move. Everything winds up as a unit. The chest comes back with the hips and the club's very much still outside the hands here. So we can just see where the shaft is. Right there, really classic one piece move away from the ball. He then starts to take that club towards the top of the swing. We see there's a great wind up and what he does a phenomenal job of is making sort of a three quarter arm swing, but with a huge shoulder turn. Now this is massive for him. This is where you guys can get a lot out of it. What he's doing is he makes this three quarter arm swing, but sets the club very late. He also keeps setting it. He actually sets it relatively early, but the arms are so in front of his body. This is what allows him to have so much space in his golf swing. So what we'll see here, this is a fairway wood from the front view. We can see it's not quite 90 degrees a set here. Halfway back there is the golf shaft versus the left arm there, which is parallel to the floor. It's not at 90 yet. So it's a little bit of a later set than some people make. And what we'll see is as he continues going back now, it's still not fully loaded in the left wrist. Now it loads late. Now it's still loading. So he's not quite started down. Now he's starting it down. And this is the load of the club coming in. Here is the key. He keeps a lot of width between his left shoulder and his hands. Sorry, his right shoulder and his hands here at the top, which means that his arms are very much in front of his body. Now, what this does, this works very much in conjunction with how he loads the club coming down. So he loads the club a lot here. We see the club setting in and we see the absolutely amazing lag. So this is the thing that allows him to hit such a low punished golf shots because when he's setting it here and getting that lag coming in really late, which you see from down the line, we then notice that he's still got this amazing lag here. There's the shaft, this big triangle of daylight, and then he keeps rotating through impact and he holds that angle for so long it's still held there and then he's open. Now we have a look at this from the front here. We can see that angle is, you know, Sergio Hogan-esque this, you know, very much in alignment with those guys in terms of how it's loaded that golf club and shaft coming down, which is why it's such an amazing ball strike. And then we have a look here, got loads of shaft lean still here at impact with this fairway wood. Left wrist a little bit bowed because the left arm is rotating into the body in this direction. The hands aren't flipping, which means that the hand can still be forwards, which is presenting a little bit less loft. And we can see here, unbelievable through the impact area. Now, here's the big bit for us that not a lot of people tend to see, is our impact here. Gary's eyes are right out ahead of the ball up here. They're almost following the flight of the ball at this moment in time. So you get told to keep your head still. It's not what a lot of the guys are doing because look where his head is here. This is very much on the path of a Deval, Annika, Sorenstam style. And then it, he, because he's rotating through with the body, it means everything can open up more. If he kept his head still, we'd have really close shoulders. So that would mean that he'd work underneath it and get a lot more draw shape on it. We can see here with the fairway wood, it opened up a little bit later, but it's still opening up. So you see there, it definitely rotated around and everything has finished into that left heel, that big style at the end of the follow through. So the takeouts that we're going to go and have a look at outside, we're going to have a look at 
how you can learn to keep your arms more in front of you and what reference point that's going to be to allow you to get more space on the downswing. And then we're going to have a look at if you're getting more open, how to encourage those eyes to trace the ball flight, which will get your body more open at impact. And this will be absolutely huge for getting more consistency and a lot more compression. So the things that you can learn from Gary Swing. So what we're looking at first of all is getting that width in the backswing because he's absolutely phenomenal at doing that. So what he really does a great job of is at that top of the backswing here, he gets the arms in front of the shoulder there. So the hands, the center of the hands in line with that right shoulder, which then means that as he starts down, the arms can stay really in front of his body. And when you set the club and you've got a lot of late set, and then it coming down. If your arms are behind you here, you won't be able to play very successful golf because you're going to be really, really trapped. So this is massive. So what you have as a reference point here is take it to the top of the backswing. And what you want to be able to do is collapse both arms into your body and the middle of your hands should hit yourself somewhere near your right pec here. Okay, that's when they've come in from the width here, they've gone that way. Now, what you want to be able to do is in order to achieve this, feel like the right palm is pushing the left thumb away so the shaft is moving towards the camera here when we have a look at it from the front view we can see that this is the width that we're creating from here to here and that can then be maintained because the arms then moving down in front even when we see the angles increased here so you can see we can get more lag but the arms are in front if we get that lag and the arms are back which is the same angle I'm trapped and then you've got to really chase through impact now, the other one that I want you to really th focus on here is if you're going to be getting open impact, do not restrict your neck tilt and your rotation from this very upper part of your body. If you try to get open through impact and you keep the head down, like the head is, this left shoulder will go up, the right side will go down, and you'll end up having a very upright golf shaft here, and the, the path will end up going too far out to the right. What you want to be able to do is as you're making your way through the shoulders will open and don't be afraid to let your eyes almost look for the camera so i would almost have this vision of following the ball flight with the eyes so the head and their tilts are coming through together which can then encourage those shoulders to get open so therefore the club can move more around this is going to be key so where those eyes look at impact can also work with how that upper body is rotating if you're really flexible you might not need to do it but it's just something that don't be afraid. It's not a case to keep your head still. That doesn't work. You've got to make sure you let that head rotate. And if anything, almost hitting short shots, envision following that ball flight with your eyes, and you should then be able to get much more open and get that club moving around in conjunction with your pivot action. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I've got loads more content coming forward. But what would you like to see going forward? And would you like to see other pros analyze? If you would, comment below and we'll endeavour to make sure we get these videos made for you guys. Thanks for watching and talk to you again really soon.